All right, what's up everyone? Welcome back here for another recap video. Today, we are going to review the stocks that we traded on Friday and also how we finished on the month of May. So Friday, we traded primarily NVOS. NVOS was the only winner that I had. I don't think I had any losers. I think I only traded NVOS, finishing up about, I can take a look here at, uh, let me pull this up here. Six hundred and sixteen dollars on uh, Friday, which you know is a nice base hit. Uh, there's a couple areas where I could have done better, which we can take a look at in the archive. Uh, but for the most part, statistics are pretty decent. Fifty-eight percent accuracy with a almost one to two risk to reward. Largest winner two hundred thirty-seven. Largest loser eighty bucks. So. Uh, pretty decent statistics, nothing that raises any eyebrows or any red flags. And uh, we can take a look at Envos uh, and how we traded that on the live archive. I can show you some trades, but it uh, looks like I did miss BNAI. I wrapped it up around 12 o'clock um, and BNAI started to creep up and uh, make a decent move. So hopefully uh, you guys who were trading midday power hour on Friday were able to get some green on BNAI. Uh, it's hard to tell if I would be green on this. I'd like to think that I would be, but there's no guarantee, of course. I mean, I've been red on stocks going straight up before. Um, it does look a little tricky. Uh, on the front side, looks like we had a false breakout there. And then another topping tail there, pretty nasty. Um, we grinded up a little bit farther here, had a double top up there. Uh, this seems pretty clean. Looks like we have a nice clean bull flags here. It seemed like a pretty nice move, actually. I don't know if I would be green on it, um, but I did run out of orders. I did run out of orders um, uh, Friday afternoon. So pretty much wrapped it up around 12 before this move happened. Uh, who knows where I would be up if I did trade. Or I could be red. I could also be red. And pretty nasty false breakout there as well. Um but yeah, I mean, BNAI, hopefully you guys slate it. Uh, the next opportunity will come on Monday. So, you know, no FOMO. You know, you can't catch every move. You're not going to be able to make money in every move. You're going to miss a lot of moves. And that's just how it is. And that I wouldn't want it any other way, too, because that means that there's more opportunity than I'm able to capitalize on it. That I'm There's more opportunity that I than I am able to capitalize on, which means that there's an abundance of opportunity in the market so I don't need to be attached to one single day one single stock one single setup one single short squeeze there's always going to be another opportunity coming so even though I did miss this which is kind of disappointing 150 percent move I do know that on Monday we will have another opportunity to look forward to so no reason to get any FOMO only just got to keep moving forward. Um, so let's take a look here at uh, NVOS. I will up I will upload the the full archive here for the uh, archive members, the Tri Trading Archive members that I've signed up uh, through MMU. That this this last archive here will be available. I'm going to upload that today, so that should be uploaded by tonight. Uh, for you guys to take a look at, but I will showcase a couple of trades here. Uh, just the main trades that really kind of got me green, and then for the rest will be for the uh, the paid subscribers of the archive. But yeah, it looks like the red to green here on Envos was where I got a chunk, a nice decent chunk here of profits. So it looks like I put in a starter there, kind of still skeptical this is going to be something. Okay, looks like we're going for the break of one dollar here looking for the break of a dollar 2k shares for the test of a dollar um just mostly trying to trying to get in for the move and then trying to take my profit if it starts to struggle because i do not want to be ending up in a false breakout or a false attempt here for the red to green so we do close right under one which is nice now we're going to look for a micro pullback and look for the test of one dollar see if we can break one dollar so micro pullback there, and it's 97, testing a dollar here, adding for the break of a dollar. 
4K share size. Could be bigger, could be bigger. It could be double. I should be double this, but we do get a nice, beautiful move here up to 108. Taking my profits. This one looks like I don't want to, it looks like it's not filling me here. So that was a quite of a, uh, I was a struggle there getting filled, but we did get filled. Um, now we got pinned to the halt level, halted up, and this is where, this is the start of the stressful day. The start of the stressful day. This is the dip in the rip. I should have done well on this, but. Because that last order lagged, I switched from trading with Dash to Think or Swim, thinking that would be better, and it just the fills are just atrocious. Just absolutely terrible. So let's take a look at what happened here. So we get the nice push there. Get the decent push there. Looking for now the dip and the rip. Here's our dip. Boom. I need to be in. I hit the buy button at 108. And here I am getting filled at 112 and then I'm trying to oh my god think or swim doesn't fill me fast enough this is why I use das like I, I cannot take this trade on think or swim it just doesn't work boom I, I'm buying here the order literally goes right there and I'm literally getting filled at 112 and then I'm selling at 114 I should be selling at 114. And then by left. <laughs> oh, come on. And then it dumps down to 111, even though the order was there at 114. <sighs> that was 5K share size, too. 5K share size. 5K. Fuck. I should have got filled at highest, 109, selling at 114. That's a five cent gain on 5K shares. I should That should be a $250 winner. I should be up 550 bucks right now. I should be up 550 bucks. But instead I lost money. I lost 50 bucks. And then we have a huge flash down here. I buy the panic dip here. 2K share size because I didn't want that same thing to happen again. And then we got a three cent winner on that one up 278. So... Let's see when I get back in. All right, so bottom and tail, getting in here. Maybe we'll see um, a retest of the highs here at 106. Decent fill, got on 106. Somehow I'm now getting at 107. I, I guess that's right. Okay, 107, okay. When do I get back in? Boom, okay. See some buying. Bottom and tail, in at 109. Selling at 111. Small gains there. Up 337. Boom. Okay. Are we going to see a retest of 118? That's what I'm looking for. So, so far I've been seeing, you know, buying coming up to the bottom, to the back up to the previous level, which is a good sign. And at 111. Gave that one, gave that baby some extra time. Woo! All the way up there at 118. Somehow I'm getting filled at 115. Let's see. I want to see this again. All right, beautiful fill there at 3,000 uh, 3, shares at 111. And I've given it some time. Boom, ride that baby up. And I'm getting filled up. I mean, like, uh, I guess it's okay, but could have been better. The fill could have been better. It's like it went up to 120, but the price never actually went up to 120. I need to put this on, like, quarter speed here. Man, like it just moves so fast. It moves so fast that I cannot have any latency. Any latency completely destroys profit potential. Destroys your edge. So up 454 so far. Got a nice dip there, micro dip, and at 12 out of 14, so small gains there. Uh, let's see here. Looks like I had another trade there. Uh, looks like I catch the dip for a higher low. 2,000 at 09, out at 112, up 526. And that was pretty it. That was, that was pretty much it. That was like the majority 
of the trades. And then we had like another retest of the highs, which was nice. But I didn't want to buy this right here. I thought it was a little bit too risky. It seemed too risky here. It felt like it was, strugg it was struggling to hold the level. Man, like I should be up 800 bucks right now. With that trade, with that halt, dip, and rip, should have been up 80, 800 bucks right now. 800 bucks, dude. That was 5K shares, too. And that's another thing that's like holding me back from like really going for big shares. Because stuff like that, stuff like that, that's like mostly out of your control. Mostly out of your control. So. I don't think I'm really gonna like push it re like really really big until like after this DAS integration is finished because it's just too risky like you've already seen like I've had orders floating here you know the fill like it, it says I'm getting buying at this price but like it takes like a, two seconds to get filled and I'm getting filled some other freaking place so it doesn't make sense for me to really put on some major risk yet until this DAS integration is done and I know what I'm actually dealing with and the fills are back to normal. I can use DAS. I can, you know, have no problem with it. I don't have an issue with floating orders. I don't have to have an issue with DAS thinking that I'm in a trade and Thinkorswim saying I'm out of, out of a trade. I can use all my hotkeys. doesn't make sense to really push it until I'm back to normal, until the system is back to normal. Because otherwise, you know, if this trade would have worked out with that 5k share size, I probably would have even pushed it harder. I probably probably would have even pushed it harder. But because of that mishap, it's like, okay, well, I'm not going to do that again. Because clearly, clearly it didn't work. Clearly the system is still kind of messed up. So I'm not going to, you know, take unnecessary risks that's out of contr my control. But, you know, I can't complain. I'm up 600 bucks. So... Um, you know, at least I'm green, but Envoss, that was pretty much it for Envoss. This is, this was also nuts, man. What the heck was this? This is, this was, this is like, I'm happy I didn't lose too much on this. Very nice break out here. Okay. Let's see here. Breaking 119, okay, boom, made to be in for the break 120, getting a nice break out there at 663. I take the dip, I take the dip. Boom, right here, I take it. Boom, 2K, I'm looking for that, I wanna see that push back up to 120. But we just teleport down, we pull back too much. And uh, 2K share, so I pretty much gave back the, the gain that I had there. And then it pops right back up. And then it pops right back up, making new highs. It's just how it goes. That's trading. So it's going to happen to everyone. It's going to happen to successful traders. It's going to happen to consistent traders, profitable traders, however you want to call them. And it's obviously going to happen to beginner traders. So, you know, it happens to everyone. And, um, yeah, I mean, that's just part of the game, you know. I bought here, I sold here, and now it's back up here. What are you going to do? But... But I'm able to hold on to some green. That's the most important part. This this is the most important part is that I could get caught in that. I can make, you know, a mistake. You know, this sh shit happens, but I'm still green because I can manage my risk. Because I can manage my risk. I didn't go 10K share size there. Didn't go 10K share size. Um, and if I did go 10, I would only go 10K share size if this number maybe was like, a 1500 on the day if I was up 1500 then I do 10k share size because I can afford to because I have a nice cushion on the day okay maybe I lose 500 bucks worst case scenario I lose 500 bucks from 1500 I'm up a thousand it's still a good day but if I'm negative if I'm minus $500 and then I do 10k share size and say you know what I got to make all my money back and then I take that loss. Now I'm really in trouble. Now I'm really in the red. Now I'm sizing up for the wrong reasons. I'm sizing up to make um, make my losses back versus trading good quality action, good quality 
setups. But uh, yeah, I mean, yeah, it's going to happen to everyone. So, you know, it's not just you. I remember beginning in my journey, it's like, oh my God, I'm the only one that's getting caught in these false breakouts and all this junk and stuff like that. I'm always getting caught in the chop. But uh, yeah, it happens to everyone. It happens to everyone. Uh, but the most important thing is managing managing those losers, not letting them get out of hand, not oversizing on crap setups, and uh, and walking away before you get too deep in the red or you give back too much profits. You know, I really like the rule of you know if you have like a daily goal, let's say my daily goal is five hundred bucks. Okay, if I give back half after I cross my daily goal, this is what Ross Cameron does. If I give back half. After I cross my daily goal of five hundred dollars, wherever you're at, you want to do a hundred a day. Uh, you can use a hundred as a number too. If I give back half, then I walk away. That's like my max. That's my new max loss after I hit my daily goal, um, which is which is good. I think that's a great a great rule to have to build the consistency and build the risk management needed to continue trading because. You're not going to, you don't want to have one trade where it wipes out half of your profits on the day. You want to ideally, you know, start to learn how to manage your risk to where you're only losing maybe, um, maybe at worst case scenario, 10% of your profits off the top versus 50%. So that way, you know, you can keep on trading. If it's good action, you're not hitting that max loss of 50% of your profits back after one trade. Um, so you can keep compounding those gains over, you know, good setups after good setups after good setups. And yeah, of course, not every every trade is going to be green. So um, yeah, managing those losers are the most important. So let's take a look here at uh, the monthly statistics. So let's pull up. Uh, yeah, so let's jump in here. Five one two five thirty one. All right. So seventy nine hundred on the month. Seventy nine hundred on the month. Pretty pretty decent. Um, pretty pretty happy with that result. I've been very consistent this month, and that's one thing that I'm very happy about. Is like even through the choppy conditions, even through the slug, the slug of the beginning of the first two weeks of May, I hung in there. I managed my wrist well, and I maintained my consistency. Even though it was small green, I maintained the green. I was not fighting it. I was not fighting a slow market, trying to force squeezing water out of a rock. I wasn't doing that. I was taking the best quality setup I could find in the day, and that was it. I wasn't trading these crappy, crappy setups with big size, trying to get to like 2,000, 1,000 on the day. I was like, you know what? This market is crap. Like the first two weeks were crap for me. So I was like, you know what? One setup. If I can find one setup, I'll trade that to the best of my ability. And um, you know, most of the time I nailed it, and that was it. Maybe I took a couple more trades, lost a little bit more off the top, and I was like, you know what? It's not worth it. It's not worth it. I'm done. And uh, yeah, uh, four twelve is the largest largest winner, which is actually not that big. So a lot of small gains kind of adding up, which is good. Um, Profit margin 40%, 51% accuracy, and 1 to 1.5 risk to reward. So, you know, pretty decent stats. Not terrific. I wouldn't say it's terrific. My best month ever was like a 60% profit margin and a 1 to 2 risk to reward. That was in February. But overall, a pretty decent month. I can't complain. Definitely can't complain. You can take a look here at the calendar. I think I might already even have that loaded up. Let me see here. No, I don't think so. Uh, let's take a look here at the calendar, but uh, yeah, hopefully you guys, you know, did some decent on, got some decent gains on the month. First two weeks, like I said, were rough, man. Like small gains, small gains, and that I was, I had to be happy with that because if I wasn't happy with that, I was having a red day for sure. But this first, first two red days here of May, very small, seventy-eight cents, pretty much flat, pretty much flat. $48, scratch trade red, scratch trade. 
And that's what we like to see. That's what we like to see. We don't like to see big red, especially when the market conditions are crappy. But uh, yeah, first two weeks we said we're crappy and um, maintaining the small green is got to be happy with it because if you're not and you're going to fight it, you will end up red. You will end red. And so I maintained my consistency, trying to trade the best quality setup I could find. And uh, even these days are small, but they do add up. $84, $104, $140, $230. Okay, a little bit of a better day here. $782, $51, a little bit smaller day. $162, small day. Um, you know, in this, this slow stretch, you know, a lot of traders struggled, but I was able to, to hang in there and maintain the consistency. And then towards the back half, it started to heat up a little bit. $1,279. Really nice day there on the 16th. Very nice. Um, this day here, $323. Nice base hit. Looks like we had a slow day here on Monday, up $24, but that's fine. You know, so not every day is going to be a big day. Tuesday, making up for it, up $881. These days, I forget. I think it was like small green. I think it was small green. I don't know, like, I had to fix this. This isn't right. I'm only up 1300 on this day. So I got to I gotta go back and fix this. I have to like go through here and delete all these trades. But there's 536 trades. It's going to take me like at least an hour to wipe that out. So maybe I'll just add my own trade and then just have it subtract 200. Just to even it out and then maybe make one trade here uh, manually just to have a just to correct. I think I'm up like 20 bucks here and like 50 bucks here. But these are green days. These are green days. And then this day was like 1300 1250 1300 something like that, um, which is a great, great day. Um, and then the last week of May, last week of May, nice, 520 up 1000 smaller day here, 76 and finishing the month, 616 So, you know, finishing decently strong, decent week there to end the month. Um and yeah, I, I hope to keep this consistency up. I cannot um, expect that every month is going to be this consistent, but if I can do the best that I possibly can with the setups that we have and the opportunities that we have, if I can do the best that I can, uh, that's the most important part. And of course, doing everything in my power to, um, to study up and maintain my edge, study up, talking to other traders, recapping and doing my live recaps or my recap videos and my live streams and the and for the pre-market live streams getting on zoom calls with other traders um, looking at other people's archives there's so many things to do to maintain your edge maintain your pulse on the market understanding how other people are trading how they are succeeding maybe they're looking at the market a little differently maybe they're trading they've adjusted something uh, to fit a different market trend Maybe they're focusing on the lows versus the highs at this point. Maybe the market shifts and maybe the lows aren't as profitable. They're a little bit more risky. Maybe the breakouts are much more powerful. So um, every trader is going to adapt and uh, you don't want to be the last one to adapt. You want to be one of the first to adapt. And that's why uh, it's important to constantly be interacting, talking to other traders, watching their archives and whatnot. So, so you can keep up with the trends of the price action. And it's always changing. And also the trends with news catalysts. Oh, that's always changing. Um, so, you know, we have different trends all the time. Sometimes it's we're getting a streak of AI news or penny stocks or only penny stocks. Recently, only penny stocks have been ripping. Um, except BNAI. BNAI was like the first one, the first few, first stock in a few weeks that we've had that wasn't actually a penny stock. Um, maybe we're getting, you know, a lot of... Uh, um, catalysts involving phase two trials or phase three trials, which was, I think, BNAI. Or maybe we're getting a lot of reverse splits uh, setups. And so, you know, keeping up with those trends as well is also very important. And uh, you can get some more insight by interacting with other traders. And yeah, I'm always here for you guys as well. Um, if you guys have my Discord, you guys can join the Discord. You guys can message me privately. I would be more than happy to get on a video call or anything with you guys as well. If you wanted to discuss some trading or wanted to go over some of your trades, I'd be totally open to do that. Uh, you can also check out the links in the description for the uh, trading archive. 
uh, MMU, Triad Trading Archive at MMU. You guys can check that out. And um, yeah, if you guys are still watching, hit that thumbs up button for me. And if you're new, consider subscribing. And I'll catch you guys for a fresh week on Monday. Peace.